بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نائن سیون ڈبل زیرو نومبر ٹوینٹی فور کوشچن پیپر ٹو ون دس از فار ون آر ففٹین منٹس اینڈ اٹ از فار سکسٹی مارکس Animal cells, plant cells and prokaryotic cells have similarities and differences in their structure. Now this is the point of the syllabus. Uh, table 1 point lists 5 organelles found in cells. Complete table 1.1 by placing a tick to show whether the organelle is present in animal cell, plant cell and prokaryote or a cross if the organelle is absent. Put a tick or cross in every box. The first row has been completed to you. So many of you leave out the crosses. Now it is saying this put a tick or a cross. So please remember you won't get marks if you do that. Now this is very basic and very easy. I don't think this is a very difficult question. I'm sure everybody could have figured this out. So everybody knows that large permanent vacuoles are only present in the plant cells. So we put this here. Then the rough endoplasmic reticulum is present in animal and plant but not in bacteria or prokaryotic cells. Golgi body is not present in prokaryotic cells and centrioles are only present in animal cells and not in prokaryotic cells. Then coming to the B part of the question, figure 1.1 sections are part of an epithelial cell found in the digestive system of an animal. The cell is specialized for absorption of digested food. The structure labeled P and Q are involved in the absorption of digested food. Name the structure labeled P. Now what was that? Structure labeled P was microvilli. You see what are microvilli is, you know, the cell, the cell membrane is folded. So this increases the surface area on this side. So this is going to help in the absorption of the digested food, which is if you've had bread, roti, roti is digested to, as contains starch is digested to glucose. So the glucose has to enter the cell. And then the glucose has to enter the bloodstream. So, I mean, I'm sure we don't study digestion in the A levels, but basically it is absorption. So we did, did this in O levels. Now it says, explain how the organelle labeled Q is involved in this process. So what is Q? Q is the mitochondria, but you're not going to get any marks uh, for mitochondria. So you're going, to, you're going to say how the organelle is involved in this process. So produces or provides ATP. Produces or you can say provides ATP because it is the site here for aerobic respiration. So produces ATP and ATP is used for active transport. You see active transport is the only active process which requires of course and endocytosis and pinocytosis and exocytosis so for active site for the for the active transport for the absorption of the <clears throat> against because they are absorbed against a concentration gradient active transport is against the concentration gradient so for two marks all you have to say produces or provides atp you can't say produces energy that's a reject produces energy would be wrong energy cannot be created or destroyed so produces ATP and for what? For active transport. So you've got one mark for this and one mark for this. Question number two. In a mammalian circulatory system, red blood cells travel through different types of blood vessels as they pass from the heart to respiring tissues and back to the heart. Figure 2.1 shows the types of blood vessels through which red blood cells travel in the circulatory system. So heart, arteries, then what else? And then capillaries and then something and then veins. Then what does it say? Complete figure 2.1 by writing the names of the missing types of blood vessels through which the red blood cells travel. So uh, it was uh, heart, arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules and veins. So for the two marks, it was one was arterioles and the other was venules. Spelling must be correct. Please remember that. B part of the question says water is the main component of blood. It has an important role in the transport of substances around the body. Figure 2.2 shows the ionic compound sodium chloride dissolving in water. Diagram not to scale. With the reference to figure 2.2, explain how water acts as a solvent for sodium chloride. And please look at the marks always when you're reading the question. It says for three marks. Now you could have said water is polar. Or you could have said water is a dipolar molecule. 
then attraction between the negatively charged chloride ions and the H positive and the partially partial positive hydrogen ions then attraction between the positively charged sodium ions and the partially negatively charged uh, oxygen then water molecules collect around the sodium chloride then ionic bonds form between the sodium chloride atom and it forms an hydration shell so three marks you had to just explain according to the diagram you had to give me some sort of a biological explanation for it so how do we word it water is a polar molecule or dipole attraction between chloride and uh, the hydrogen which is partially positive then attraction between sodium and the oxygen which is partially negative and water molecules collect around sodium chloride and separate ions part c figure 2.3 shows a calapacus penguin as feniscus mandibulus swimming in the water penguins are birds that live on land but spend a lot of time swimming under water hunting for food penguins can remain under water for up to 20 minutes during this time they do not breathe but their tissue continues to respire please know the difference between breathing and respiration respiration is on a cellular level breathing is taking in and inhaling and exhaling hemoglobin in the red blood cells of penguins has a higher affinity for oxygen than hemoglobin in other birds that do not swim under water figure 2.4 shows the oxygen dissociation curve for a bird that does not swim under water draw a line on figure 2.4 to suggest the position of the oxygen dissociation curve for penguin hemoglobin and there are two marks for that so we see here percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen and we see a growth cu a curve like this a graph like this and partial pressure of oxygen and this is the figure 2.4 so we have to draw a graph on this a line on this to show how the pem penguins so the line will be drawn to the left so we'll have it here because it has a higher affinity for uh, oxygen so this is a sort of curve that you would have to draw it has to be to the left and must start at zero sigmoid shape of the line and starting at zero so this is how one would have had to draw it then coming to part 2 of the question penguins hemoglobin is very sensitive to a decrease in ph caused by an increase in the carbon dioxide concentration in the blood carbonic acid decrease in ph explain how a decrease in ph affects penguin hemoglobin and suggest how this helps the penguin to swim under water for a long time oxygen can be released from hemoglobin to supply the respiring tissues in case in hydrogen ions so more hydrogen ions bind to hemoglobin and hemoglobinic acid is formed so the hemoglobin affinity for oxygen reduces when the ph decreases hemoglobin and oxygen friendship decreases so the oxygen is released affinity means friendship so we say hemoglobin affinity for oxygen reduces when the ph decreases now this will help in aerobic respiration in muscle cells and that can continue for longer so you can in a way delay anaerobic respiration or you could have talked to the bore shift to the curve shift to the right providing atp for muscle contraction so any valid point on that score or you could have been talking about these things so wording these answers oxygen can be released uh um, from hemoglobin to supply the respiring tissues excretes in h positive ions why because you see carbon dioxide forms carbonic acid divides into um, bicarbonate ions and h ions so h positive and bicarbonate ions and the h ions uh, combine with hemoglobin to form hemoglobinic acid but when hemoglobinic acid forms hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen decreases so the oxygen is given up when the oxygen is given up aerobic respiration in muscle cells can continue for longer part d the heart rate of a penguin decreases while it is swimming under water heart rate is regulated by a group of specialized cells in the wall of the right atrium the activity of these cells is modified by nerve impulses named the group of specialized cells in the wall of the right atrium sa node or you could have written sino no you couldn't have written the abbreviation this is not allowed so you would have to write the whole thing san is actually an ignore it says in the mark scheme so sino atrial node because it's not a standard abbreviation
Question number three, figure 3.1 is a photomicrograph of a transverse section through a region of the wall of the bronchus in the gas exchange system. Wall of the bronchus. And then it says identify the tissues J and K. So we have to identify K and we have to identify J. So identify J and K. J is cartilage, K is smooth muscle. And K is smooth muscle. So and suggest how the wall of a bronchiole differs from the wall of the bronchus for these two tissues. Now that's very easy because you see this is a bronchiole. The difference uh, is cartilage in the bronchus but not in the bronchioles. And uh, smooth muscle, more smooth muscle in the wall of the bron bronchiole. So basically you must know how to read the micrograph. And that's of course a syllabus point, reading the micrographs. B part of the question, tuberculosis and infectious disease that affects the human gas exchange system. The pathogen that causes TB secretes a protein that can be detected in the saliva. Early diagnosis of TB is important in reducing the transmission of the pathogen. Scientists have developed a test strip for TB that uses monoclonal antibodies. Monoclonal antibodies are specific in their action. The test strip contains mobile monoclonal antibodies that bind to one part of the protein secreted by the pathogen immobilized monoclonal antibodies. So two things in the test strip. Figure 3.2 shows a simplified diagram of the, uh, of the test strip. Direction of flow of saliva through the test strip. Number one, a sample pad where saliva is added to the test strip. Then two area containing mobile and monoclonal antibodies attached to tiny gold particles. Then three test area containing immobilized monoclonal antibodies that bind to protein secreted by the pathogen that causes TB. Then a control area and five area where the test strip can be held. A sample of saliva is collected and put onto the sample pad in the test strip. The saliva moves up the test strip through area two. The mobile and monoclonal antibodies are attached to tiny gold particles. If these antibodies collect in test area three, a gold line becomes visible on the test strip. A gold line becomes visible in area four confirms that the test strip is working and the results are valid. State the name of the pathogen that causes TB, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Mycobacterium tuberculosis, or you could have said mycobacterium bovis, that was allowed as well. Then name the part of the monoclonal antibody that binds to the protein from the pathogen, antigen binding site, or you could have said the variable region. That's the antigen binding site. which is also called the variable region. Part three, saliva is added to a test strip to test for the presence of the protein secreted by the TB pathogen. Figure 3.3 here is a diagram showing some of the molecules in area three of the test strip and a positive result for TB is obtained. Monoclonal antibody attached to a tiny gold particle protein secreted by the TB pathogen attached to two different monoclonal antibodies. Mono, immobilized monoclonal antibody in area 3 attached to the test line. Now use the information. Use the information in figure 3.3 to suggest and explain why this test is specific for TB. Well, it's very simple. The immobilized monoclonal antibody has a binding site which is complementary shape to the protein secreted by the TB pathogen. And then the monoclonal branch on the test line will only bond with protein secreted by the TB pathogen. And monoclonal antibodies with tiny gold particles are only held in place if protein secreted by the TB pathogen is present. The TB protein is specific to the TB pathogen. So it's all being very specific. It won't react with any other protein which may be produced by some other pathogen. The person could be suffering from, from some other uh, disease, some other pathogen, another bacterial disease or a viral disease. So I'm uh, just giving you the two points and avoiding that. But besides these two points, there was another point also that monoclonal antibodies with tiny gold particles are only held in place if protein secreted by the TB pathogen is present in the saliva. And the fact that the TB protein is specific to the TB 
pathogen so i have not written those points then coming to part 4 of the question area 4 contains different immobilized antibodies dose in area 3 the mobile monoclonal antibodies bound to tiny gold particles will bind to these immobilized monoclonal antibodies in area 4 if the test has functioned correctly a gold line will be visible in area 4 suggest how the structure of immobilized monoclonal antibodies in area 3 differ from the structure of the monoclonal antibodies in area 4 as two marks Different shaped variable region, a different shaped variable region, different primary structure, different tertiary structure, different bonds holding the tertiary structure. You see, when we say the uh, variable region is something like this, like the active site of an enzyme is like this, and then we say the active site of an enzyme is like this. Now, what is the difference in them? The basically, is the primary structure is different. So the primary structure, both could be having 100 amino acids. But the primary structure is different. Primary structure is what? The number and sequence of amino acids. So different areas where there will be disulfide bonds and hydrogen bonds and ionic bonds. So different primary structure, different tertiary structure, different bonds holding the tertiary structure. So basically, you know, just look at the wording, then you can probably understand what I'm trying to convey to you. Vaccination is another way of reducing the transmission of infectious diseases such as TB. The BCG vaccine is used to help the control of TB. This vaccine contains a weakened strain of the pathogen that causes TB. The BCG vaccine stimulates the development of antigen-specific memory T lymphocytes. Explain how memory T lymphocytes provide protection from TB in a person who has been given a BCG vaccination. Well, this is going to provide long-term immunity. Um, secondary immune response will be fast and strong because of increased number of uh, specific T lymphocytes. Memory T lymphocytes recognize uh, the foreign antigen T helper cells secrete cytokines and cytokine results in increased phagocytosis or increased B lymphocyte phenomena and more antibodies, more plasma B cells forming and more antibodies and the pathogen is destroyed so the person will not suffer from the disease so this provides long-term immunity secondary immune response is faster if the pathogen enters after some time they are already present the increased number of t lymphocytes and the memory t lymphocytes are activated by this foreign antigen and the t helper cells secrete cytokines and this results in more phagocytosis or you can say angry macrophages increased or you can say more of the B lymphocyte uh, response in which B lymphocytes are activated and then differentiate into plasma cells and memory cells. And the plasma cells secrete antibodies and will destroy the pathogen so you will not suffer from the disease. Now coming to the D part of the question, the bladder is the organ in the body used to store urine. When cells divide uncontrollably in the bladder, a tumor develops. This can lead to bladder cancer. The BCG vaccine has been used to treat bladder cancer. Interesting. The BCG vaccine is introduced into the bladder. The tumor cells take up the weakened pathogens in the vaccine and act as antigen-presenting cells. Name the process by which the tumor cells are taken up by the weakened pathogen. Endocytosis. Endocytosis. Or you could have also said, you could have also said phagocytosis. That's also allowed. Then it says, suggest <clears throat> how the antigen presentation by tumor cells stimulates an immune response that leads to the destruction of the tumor cells. Very interesting. Some T lymphocytes have receptors with a complementary shape to the antigen on the tumor cell. Antigens on the surface of the tumor cell bind to receptors. T lymphocytes divide by mitosis, which is clonal expansion. Then T killer cells are produced that destroy the tumor cell. And this method is used by the T killer cells to destroy a tumor cells. And then the B lymphocytes produce antibodies. Or you can also say phagocytosis of the cancer cell. So T lymphocytes have receptors with a complementary shape to the antigen on the tumor cell. Antigens on tumor cell bind to receptor T lymphocytes clonal expansion. T killer cells are produced that destroy the tumor cells. <clears throat> 